The full episode is now available on Patreon and YouTube memberships. Please see the link in the description for more details. So, Preston, it's been a year mm. since Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power has premiered. It's also been a year oh. since we had House of the Dragon Season 1. And uh, here we are a year later. I wanted to huh. ask you, what are your thoughts on both of these shows a year later? Huh, that's... that's... That's an interesting, um, an interesting little fact. Now, obviously, we're a little biased because, like, because we deal so much with Game of Thrones properties, like things are a little different for us. But um, I think Rings of Power is uh, is interesting in that. Um, so you and I often talk about how you and I like independently both watched Spring- Rings of Power. We didn't even confer on this, and we came together, and we were like, honestly. It's middle of the road, right? Like our, mm-hmm. our like yeah. it, it was a little dull, but it wasn't horrible. It wasn't great. And so like these these reviews that said like, oh, this was the worst thing in the world, or other reviews that I imagine there must be the reverse reviews that say it's the best thing in the world. But there were a lot of reviews that were like, this is the worst thing in the world. No, it uh, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. It was it was almost worse than that in that it's forgettable. Like it's mm. mid. So, and, um, I want to compare this to, uh, the Phantom Menace when it first came out. And as, as a Star Wars fan, when the Phantom Menace came out and everybody was so hyped that it came out and Phantom Menace was so bad, I remember just talking to friends about the Phantom Menace and how much it was, how horrible it was for just months and months if not like a year later like two like it would just come up constantly it was it was an odd thing um and maybe because like there was such so much heavy uh commercialization that you'd go to a restaurant like taco bell and there'd still be phantom menace stuff up or you'd go into a uh a, a, a target and there'd just be like rows and rows of phantom menace toys everywhere so in, in some ways like it would always come back to mind because it was visually there. But what was, what was strange is because Phantom Menace was so bad and it was, and Star Wars was so beloved, like it was very traumatic. Now, and I think this is something to say about Rings of Power is that as much as people love uh, Lord of the Rings um, and they love the Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings, like, if we if rings of power were, was really that bad people would be still talking about it a, a year mm. later but in a sense it's disappeared poof and I, I hate to cut you off here but you're right however the problem is as forgettable and mediocre as rings of power is it still makes a lot of money bitching about it and the right wing grifters will continue to do so it won't die specifically because their audience likes it when they take a shit on it as long as these guys continuously make money over complaining about a black elf and a black dwarf they're not gonna let it die as much as they hate it yeah um but like it doesn't you know it's not like either one of us like wake up thinking about it like or 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 reflect on like what a great show like think about how often you reflect on the sopranos like think about that for a moment or even like the wire it's been it's been how many years since i've seen the wire and how often like i like the wire still comes up in conversation and how people still reflect on it you know mm. um or even shows like Seinfeld and Friends, like certain things like have an impact. And when things are good, they have an impact. When things are bad, they have an impact. Like I bring up Battlestar Galactica's final season quite a bit, like when talking about like, you know, or How I Met Your Mother's final season, like comes up quite a bit. When something is truly bad, people talk about how bad it is. And when something's truly good, people talk about how truly good it is. But I don't think outside of these like grifter channels that have nothing else to to sort of like do something on um i don't think anybody else is really considering and thinking about rings of power because it was so mid and so forgettable and i i so i really think that's kind of the final verdict is that 
it did disappear. And that kind of shows that it was um, a forgettable in the middle show. That's so sad that we've come to this point with, uh, with Lord of the Rings because damn, like after, after the Peter Jackson films, my God, like the, the, the original three and then the Hobbit oh, films, yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't, I wouldn't want to say the Hobbit films were, were forgettable. They were just bad. Um, but everything that's been said about yeah. the Hobbit films has already been said. So there's no really a reason to revisit that. Well, but at the same time, Lord of the Rings is not a property that's constantly sho shoved in your face all the time. Like star Wars is mm. we have like three new star that's Wars shows true. every year. So, yeah, hmm. I mean, it is true that, like, Star Wars does get shoved in your face, and so you have to talk about it. Like, every time there's a new show, you start talking about the previous ones. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'd, I'd love to forget about Book of Boba Fett, but we, can't, we constantly have to think about it because another Star Wars show is out, you know? Um, you know, another season of something makes... Another season of Mandalorian makes you think about the previous seasons. So, I mean, maybe when Rings of Power Season 2 comes out, we'll start it'll, it'll start coming up again. Um, but... It's uh, it's for the most like I I would just say for the most part forgettable, you know. You know it's funny like if if Mandalorian was mid, you still it still wouldn't be forgettable because of the brilliant marketing that is Baby Yoda. Like Baby Yoda, despite <laughs> even Mando season three was bad. I didn't like Mando. See, thinking back on it now, Mando season three was just not that great. Good moments here and there, but for the most part, huge time waster. But Baby Yoda, those that will always sell regardless if it's good or not. Regardless of how you think about oh, it, yeah. Baby Yoda has made a, an impact. So there is no Baby Yoda adjacent for Lord of the Rings. Without any effort to buy, to like purchase these products, like my child has at least two Baby Yoda like pieces of clothing. And, and he has no idea what Star Wars is. I had no desire to buy it for him. It's just that like... People that want to give you clothes are like, well, I'll give you this Baby Yoda clothes. Okay. Well, you know, like the, that's, that's, that's how kind of ubiquitous like Baby Yoda is. is you're you're going to accidentally get a, a Baby Yoda piece of property without any effort to do so. <laughs> you're so right. It, it, is it better to be remembered for being bad or not being remembered at all? Hmm. I, don't I know. think um you well, I mean it yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say. Like, you know, the the people still talk about Howard the Duck or people still talk about the room or um uh you know, a lot of these atrocious, really bad movies um that that, that occurred. But there are like just movies that there are a bunch of like forgotten movies that just never that never come up, you know. Um It's 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 an odd thing about like about I mean I think in general there there is kind of a mystery on uh, there is something mysterious about which songs get remembered and become part and you know appear on oldie stations and which songs don't and it, sometimes it's a little random you know hmm. but uh, sometimes it has to do with you know whose royalties were cheap and stuff stuff like that um, you know so a lot of one hit wonders end up uh, like appearing on oldies radio or, or because they have cheap royalties as opposed to like Madonna who has expensive royalties. But um, yeah, there's, there's just an odd thing about, about which mo movies and, and, and shows and that get kind of remembered over time. Um, like I, I personally think Scarface is not a great movie. Um, and, but for some reason, Scarface is really, really remembered. Maybe because it's it's there's a lot of weirdness to it, you know. There's it's very '80s and there's tigers and odd music and piles of cocaine and stuff. But there are there are like other movies on the exact same caliber that are kind of forgotten. Like I don't know if you think about the movie Carlito's Way or Black Rain or something, you know, that are like about the same level of of like you know, popularity or, you know, or at the time they got around the same level of reviews, but for some reason, certain movies stick and certain movies don't like wall street is always going to be remembered for some reason, you know, but there's a million other movies that were just as successful that just kind of disappear. And I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know what it is, but, um, that makes, you know, exactly what makes something remembered. But I think, I guess you have to be like bold 
and new in, in, in some way. Um, uh, I don't know. Like, do you have examples of things that like you kind of remember that were for, that are forgotten or, or, um, um, like things that, things that you really liked that were into that just kind of vanished and no one ever talks about ever again? I can't think of one off the top of my head. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to make arguments as for why Scarface is remembered while other movies aren't, but I want to say it's the culture, but at the same time, that's not a good excuse. I also want to say it's because Cubans are such a huge part of American history, especially in the last like 50 to 70 years, you know? Yeah. But at the same time like uh I don't know, like do Cubans have more of an impact on American history than let's say you know mexicans do like i guess but not really i i, I want to say it's like because scarface has been featured on so many like other shows and movies as like this like really yeah. cool thing to have in your house you know i remember or like one the, specific the dorm room poster you know the yeah dorm room posters. right or, or the soundtrack but like i guess it's maybe an amalgamation of all those things maybe mm. I, I don't know so <laughs> Here, here's another here's another thing to think about. Um, so let, let, I'm just picking a random year. Let's talk about the year 1987. Okay, I'm gonna pick the I'm gonna tell you the, the top ten grossing movies of 1987. Okay, uh -huh. number one is Beverly Hills Cop two. Number two is Platoon. Number three is Fatal Attraction. Number four is The Untouchables. Number five is Three Men and a Baby. Number six, The Secret of My Success. Number seven is Stakeout. Number eight. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Number eight is is Lethal Weapon. Number nine mm. is The Witches of Eastwick. And number 10 is Predator. That's weird. So I, I know Predator and Lethal Weapon. And I know the first three. But the other ones, not so much. Wait, Robocop's not on that list? I, I swear Robocop should be on that Ro list. Robocop's like four, it's like 14. Oh, shit. Um, so most of those, Fatal Attraction, I kind of know about. Obviously, Beverly Hills Cop, because mm -hmm. Eddie Murphy was like a huge breakout star in the 80s. Having been through this time, like, and, and remembering all of these movies, I'll tell you that, like, the Beverly Hills Cop phenomenon was enormous. And I have to say, has largely, like, tapered off. Like, people don't really remember the Be Beverly Hills Cop movies as much as, 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 as huge as they were. Right. Um, they kind of, like... Uh, Platoon was like nominated for like a, a bunch of Oscars, and like in retrospect, people think the movie is not not that good. And and um, but it was like Charlie Sheen like is a serious actor kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Fatal Attraction was like the drama that you had to see, and you know people kind of remember like Glenn Close like cooking a like a, a bunny and putting it in in uh, in um, Michael Douglas's kitchen and stuff. The Untouchables, I mean, incredible, like, kind of forgotten. That's Sean Connery and and um, and um, Field of Dreams. Um, Three Men and the Baby, huge, kind of kind of movie, also forgotten. Secret of My Success was was Michael J. Fox. He was like riding high, and you know, Stakeout. I think Stakeout is is um, Emilio Estevez movie. <laughs> you know, like, you know, and then, so like the, the thing that has like, like staying power is Predator, you know, um, that is true. Huh. And like Robocop. And even I would even say like, um, I'm trying to think of these movies on here. Lethal Weapon, Predator. The other ones are Dragnet, La Bamba, Crocodile Dundee. Crocodile Dundee people still talk about. Robocop, uh, like outrageous fortune number 16 dirty dancing huge huge staying power dirty dancing when you think like you know like why is dirty dance why does dirty dancing stick in the zeitgeist so strongly where everybody's seen dirty dancing but platoon or you know or better or is 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 not you know what it what is it about it you know like um that it's it's so odd and then uh, going down the list, Living Daylights, that's the Bond movie, uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, re-release, Full Metal Jacket, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Mannequin, um, you know, Star Trek, uh, Roxanne, Roxanne is um, 
Steve Martin is Syria is um the big nose uh um Cyrano. Space Blind Date, Space Balls, Star Trek Four, The Voyage Home, The Golden Child, which is a another Eddie Murphy movie. You know, like it's it's um you can go down like and it's funny because like even hitting movies like Planes, Trains, and Automobiles is number twenty nine. That's a a Steve Martin movie. And that's and John much Candy. more remembered. Yeah, that's much more mm-hmm. remembered than Roxanne, which did a lot, which did better. You know, like why is planes, trains, and automobiles? Like, I, I also think it really man. depends on the reruns, right? Because nowadays, mm-hmm. I don't, I, I haven't had like cable or dish in over fifteen years. Um, but when I did, the only reason I saw Scarface was because it was a school night. Yet, I, of course, I stayed up until fucking what three a.m. watching this thing. Yeah. I think it was on FX. I, I really, at the end of the day, I think the reason they have such staying power is because they're either on reruns or, mm, or because it somehow attaches itself to like a culture, right? Like, yeah, this is something a friend of mine uh, told me about uh, a buddy of mine who is a black man. And he was telling me how the black community in the United States has a huge love of Italian mafia films. And I'm like, really? He goes, yeah. Ever since he told me that years ago, I started to notice. Like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Like, Fatal Attraction. I think the reason Fatal Attraction is no longer in the cultural zeitgeist is because Basic Instinct replaced it a few years later. Because it's kind of like the same movie, right? Yeah, but it's it's not like... It's not like... uh... I don't know. Like a lot of those gangster movies like are all in the same genre, but um, I mean, you're right that they're both Michael Douglas movies, but uh, I mean, you could say like, why didn't when you have, when you have Scarface, like why doesn't, um, I don't know, like, uh, like Goodfellas replace it in the zeitgeist, you know, like some, some other gangster movie or casino. Um, True. It's just, it's, it's very odd. Like, like you go down these lists, right? This is this is some some kind of funny funny stuff. So, the Princess Bride and a movie called Throw Mama from the Train did about did about the same business. And like I've seen Throw Mama from the Train, it's the Billy Crystal movie, by the way, and mm-hmm. Billy Crystal Danny DeVito movie. But like, the Princess Bride is of course like something that's in the forefront of like like. <laughs> like well like you hear princess bride you're like oh my gosh if I, I could say enrico montoya and everybody knows what i'm talking about but like throw mama from the train i can't you can't name the names of any of those characters you know that cap- do you think that, it has to have movie. like a catchy catchphrase like with game of thrones i i can like like you know you play the mm. game of the way no you doubt winter is coming like you think it has to have a catchy like yeah. phrase or like a standout star that's like like bigger than life like eddie murphy and beverly hills cop you think like I mean, you that's part you're, of you're too? right. You are right that that like having a very shocking scene, having a scene that people remember that have sa- that has salience is like more significant than anything else. I, I was listening to Bill Burr the other day, and he he mentioned um, he mentioned the end of of uh, the Dead Zone, which is like I don't know if you've ever seen the Dead Zone. It's it's not a good movie, but at the end of the Dead Zone. Uh, uh, Christopher Walken tries to assassinate a, a presidential candidate played by Martin Sheen and Martin Sheen like grabs a baby and tries to use it as a human shield <laughs> and after he uses the, tries to use the baby as the human shield like no one votes for him right mm-hmm. and so and it's such a shocking scene like this person grabbing a baby and trying to use a baby as a human shield that like it's remembered and so like Bill Burr was like using, and I don't know how effective it is. I mean, I got the reference. I don't know how many people got the reference because that wasn't a very successful movie, but like it stuck out, right? So there's so many things that are memorable about The Princess Bride or things like that. Um, so I don't know, maybe. But, but uh, it's just, it's. I just find it odd that certain things stick and certain things don't. But bringing this back to like Rings of Power, did Rings of Power have any scenes that you kind of go, oh, I remember, like, that sticks out for me, you know? Only like, oh, in right. only in a cringy way. Like, the very end, the very last episode where she, um, where she has the vision of her and, and Sauron on the, uh, on the, the raft, 
and they look in the reflection and of course Sauron's in his armor and she's like in her gown and you know at yeah. one point they're they're looking at each other face to face and they're yelling into the camera that was so cringe and so bad i remember that because of how oh. i laughed at it um but which is not a good thing yeah so i don't i mm. don't remember that i think like it like if i'm thinking of the the scenes of the show that were the most salient to me galadriel jumping off the boat before she gets into um the, 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 the glowy light. Yeah, the Undying mm-hmm. Lands. That stuck with me. Um, I guess, like... Uh, trying to think. When when they pour water under the ground and it, like, explodes the volcano and, like, cre- creates Mordor and it starts raining ash on everybody and it just all of a sudden everything looks like hell, that has stuck with me. And I think that's, you know, visually very, very fucking strong. Um, but, like, what else, like, was really, like, a strong, like, a strong memory for you where you're like, that's a scene. That's a fucking scene, you know? Like, take Game of Thrones. Mm. Like, Littlefinger pulling out that dagger and having it behind Ned and him going, I told you not to trust me. And the, and the episode ending, boom, is so, like, memorable. Um... While Rings of Power is a lot of people like talking. And so I don't really remember like any like, like, oh, right. That crazy scene. Remember that scene from Rings of Power? Uh, like the thing when we're talking about Fatal Attraction, everybody remembers the bunny getting cooked because it's such a ridiculous scene. Like she co- she captured a bunny and then like boiled it on his stove. Like that's ridiculous, you know. Um, people remember that. But... In Predator, people remember uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger covered in the mud and him being like, he couldn't see me, you know, like, because it's such a, like, the scene is so unusual and different or like Dirty Dancing, everyone, everyone remembers no one puts baby in a corner because it's so ridiculous and weird, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but what, like, what scenes did Rings of Power have that really stuck out? And so for me, like, yeah, her jumping off the boat. And the the actual like explosions and like everything raining down, but I can't think of much else that really like stuck out. Where I was like, "That's a scene." Hmm. Yeah, like I can think of like moments that happen, but it's sticking out. When they first get to uh, the um, uh, Numenor, I thought that was pretty cool as they're sailing in. I thought that was very cool. Mm. Uh, huh. I can't. Think I, of I guess I remember Sauron's street fight. Kind of right. He had a street fight. Right? Wasn't he fighting people in the streets of like New? Yeah, Rome? yeah. He that kind of sticks out fun. to me. Mm-hmm. What's funny though is is like okay, I remember you and I talking about the things we liked about Rings of Power, and we liked um, Elrond and and the dwarfs like relationship, and we liked them talking and their friendship. But at the same time, I can't remember anything that they did. <laughs> 